Yeah, I think a lot of it really comes down to network optimization. Okay. And if you look at it, I'll, I'll talk about the, the GSM path for a second. Sure. Obviously, there's only two operators there, and they're already off the table, but if you look at it on a global basis, there's so much that the HSPA 2G, 3G operators can do to get additional capacity in their network without getting more spectrum. Yeah. You know, part of it's a device strategy. If you look at, I was talking to Telstra as an example, they've claimed that they've basically doubled the capacity capability of their network just through a technology migration on HSPA. So day one when they launched release five HSPA with you know, devices that only supported you know, 3.6 megabits per second. Fast forward that to the day where they're launching dual carrier um, with advanced receiver capabilities. They basically double the capacity without deploying new cell sites, without deploying additional capacity. So that can go a long ways. Well, I think the other piece is, I think it allows you opportunity for smarter infrastructure uh -huh. because there's also laws of physics. I mean, on these devices, there's so much you can transmit on the uplink you know, and how far you can be, right? So you can't be 10 miles away and be transmitting 20 megabits with a 20 megabits LT signal. You've got to get closer and closer. So that demands also to have smarter infrastructure, Pico cell, distributed antenna systems that allow you to now build uh, cell side infrastructure that are easily deployable, faster deployable, and high capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we call in our company something called inside out network technologies, mm -hmm. meaning that the network is going from the inside out for broadband. People are using it more indoors, you know, mm -hmm. where you have the need for a people cell like infrastructure or a DAS distributed antenna structure. That's where people are congregating, that's where they're using the data, and then you go to the outside. So you don't have, you've got to build it smarter. So just blanketing every cell site with an LT radio, you could divide, design it to your point on optimize HSPA and then build LT where you have the data command. If you look at traditional cell site infrastructures, the build out times are 24 months to get some of these macro sites up in the air. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can do these Pico cells in six months, nine months, that's a huge saving right there in terms of time to get to market to the customer. And I think that's some of the challenges we've seen with some of the 4G networks that have been taking a long time to come out, uh, but they're still faster than 3G, which took much longer, yeah. and I think the, the need for is now for innovative products that can be rolled out much faster. The devices are rolling out at a much faster pace. Networks aren't keeping up. I think that's the fundamental challenge right now. Is that you have the new iPad coming in, you know, six months later is a new one, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and the data crunch keeps stepping up. Yeah. One of the things with the, with the heterogeneous network, HetNets, is how you make everything kind of work together, because you have low power, small cell, Pico cells, yeah. working with big cells, macro, high power, um, you know, and so there's, there's, a cha there's challenges there. Yeah. They have to be addressed in how you make sure the device is connecting to the right network. Is it going to Wi-Fi? Is it going to a femto cell, a Pico cell, the macro? And that's based upon all kinds of things, and that's, that's where kind of the LTE advanced standard comes in and helps solve some of those issues mm -hmm. as far as where should this device be to really optimize my network. And I think the challenge too is as you go from you know, HSPA plus or HSPA to LTE, yes you get more capacity to some extent, but that capacity quickly gets sucked up. Yeah, so yeah, if, you, yeah. if you give somebody a fatter pipe, <laughs> yeah, you, go from, you go from watching yep. YouTube to Netflix. Yep. Yep. You know, and, yep. so, and so you actually in some way lose. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the challenge as well. So I think operators need to think about, especially with mobile video. Yeah. Because that, that is the killer. That's that's you know two-thirds you know of, of yep. the traffic or yep. whatnot. Are 50% today going to two thirds yeah. a few years from now? You know, people can't. The operators can't afford to let people watch Netflix over their mobile phone. Yes. It's just, I just, the economics <laughs> do not work out. You know, but they kind of caught themselves in that they were offering unlimited data. Yeah. You know, people got used to expecting that as a service, and, and Sprint still, I guess, kind of does in a way. way. On their other handsets, yeah. Yeah. You know, so so people started to expect that. Yeah. Um, so I think you'll see new billing and new new uh, um, business plans being yeah. introduced that will not be so much based upon how much data I use, but the service but that I'm being offered. Ultimately, they're going to go to the shorter cell, meaning a Wi-Fi yeah. cell or a Pico cell, mm -hmm. and then you need large transport networks to help you transport that, because the cells are going to get smaller and smaller, and your wireless connection to afford that yeah. on your device is going to be the shortest hop that you right. can get onto a broadband network, right? Yeah. A true, I mean, a fiber network, basically. Yeah. So that means that wireless network will become smaller, yeah. but they will have more wireless nodes. Yeah. So the complexity on the network management side and on the software side becomes an issue, because now you can assume you can have your personal PicoCell, yeah. personal device, that's your 
you know, equivalent to your handset. Yeah. But if you go to that model, then I think you can do Netflix yeah. on, on that. So this is why I think Sprint with the clear wire assets can leverage that. AT&T adding T-Mobile leverages that. I think Verizon becomes having a lesser spectrum, but they've got to come up with a strategy to optimize that spectrum better. Yeah. So I think part of the issue is spectrum optimization could be a big issue. Yeah. Because when I look at the spectrum, when we add more carriers in a sector, we do it based on the hottest sector. Mm -hmm. Not every sector is using that spectrum. So when you think about spectrum sharing, there could be opportunities where operators may be able to help each other.